What kind of entrepreneur are you? There are different types of entrepreneurs. There are people who are able to scale and grow at a massive level. I'm not that guy. I'm working on it. There are people who are able to only get things one step at a time. Those are simple, easier. They just don't want to complicate it. They go slow and steady. There's others who are probably more tech engineering wise where they're able to build up systems and build things and replicate and replicate. But when it comes to walking away, that's another challenge. Entrepreneurship is not easy. There's a very high failure rate and it's not for everyone. My name is Fernando. I'm a founder and CEO of Zen's Tea House. I am a tea entrepreneur and I want to share with you briefly how we got here. When I started the Zen's Tea House company, it was not easy. It was very humble beginnings. When I started, I used my unemployment check. I had just finished five years in the United States Navy and I started selling tea from my backpack. Yeah, I didn't have a car. My wife had a two-door Honda Civic and a minimum wage job at Subway while she was going to school full-time at Long Beach, uh, Cal State Long Beach. I was going to school at Long Beach City College. That was my full-time job. I was going to school full-time, I think it was 12 units, and I was selling tea from my backpack. Well, I started selling at the farmer's markets because of advice from my father-in-law. He said, why don't you start selling at the farmer's markets because you have a lot of traffic. Now, mind you, I did not know anything about tea. I spent you know, a number of months researching, learning as much as I could. This was back in 2012. Internet was not as comprehensive. And I still found that most of the best education was at the library. So I would read books on tea and then I would build my model. I built the model doing farmer's markets, but I had no sales experience when I started selling at farmer's markets. And I sold out for five weeks in a row. So with the help of my family from friends and employees, we hired employees, I was working overtime. I was brewing the teas out of my house. Uh, it was actually an apartment. Um, start first out of my uh, working out of my parents uh, in-laws house um, through a cottage food operator a CFO I was actually the first cottage food operator of all of Valley County 2013 and I was brewing the teas and I go to the farmers markets and sell and then when I had those employees I had to learn how to handle employees the military taught me much it did not teach me interpersonal skills or how to manage employees they don't even tell you how to manage your emotions. Okay, time management, yes. But I had to learn how to manage people and I was doing so at farmer's markets. I didn't really know how to sell to people. I just so happened to have really good product, give them samples and boom, it took off. We sold out because people were never given high quality organic loose leaf tea and i'm based in los angeles los angeles is a metropolitan area with a lot of commerce but it was not something that people had so when they tasted it they bought it well trying to keep up with the demand i learned how to manage customers and i learned how to manage employees it was not easy i was brewing the teas packaging the teas saying out to the markets. And then I was there behind the table managing these employees, managing these customers while the company was growing. So I thought, well, if I'm going to expand, I can't just be at every location. So I started sending my most senior employees off. They would shoot to these farmer's markets and I was going to the employees who had the least amount of experience. At the end of 2013, we had, I believe, 15 or 16 farmer's markets that were running. I was attending five of them, but it was those were running without me. And so I had to package the teas because it's all loose leaf, putting it in bags. So I was packaging the teas, managing the employees, managing the customers, and I had outgrown my little apartment because I think it was after six months I was able to afford uh, to get an apartment. So at ninth, the ninth month, 
I got a 400 square foot office space and I was packaging teas there. Go there two days a week. And now all of a sudden I was managing a brick and mortar location. And by the way, if you are running a farmer's market or you're in the farmer's market industry, you may not know this, but if you get a brick and mortar location, it's a big deal. It means you made it. You went from working out of your car or garage or, you know, office, you know, room and selling on the streets, farmer's markets, you know, street vendors. And, but now you have a brick and mortar location where people could come and visit you. Made that. It was not open to the public, but two to three times a week, people would knock on the door and try to come in. And so after about five months, it was five months, we had outgrown it because we were expanding to more locations that I counted the numbers and said, you know what, if I could have, if I could have 15 customers come in and spend X amount of money a week, then we could keep the doors open just lock in these times. And so I had went from one little office space to a thousand square foot warehouse space. It was about 1,200. And so I had two locations for a little while and I was stretched very thin. Brewing the teas. I had a team now who could package the teas. I had a team that was going out to the farmer's market selling the tea. And I was working at the warehouse now. Mind you, I was, I was, I had been out of the Navy for less than a year and a half at this point. So there was a huge learning curve and I found myself running a warehouse. Well, fast forward about a year later, less than that, people wanted to start ordering tea online. I don't know. I, I did not know anything about computers. I did not own a computer while I was in the Navy. I had to do some work while I was in the Navy, but I was not a computer guy. I was an engineer. I was a damage controlman, a shipboard firefighter. I was called a snipe for those old school Navy people who know about that. And so I had to learn how to work on computers, how to, to build a website. And the first website was not very good. So just so you have a context, I had to learn sales. Before that, I, even, I had to learn about T. Then I had to learn how to manage customers, manage employees, manage inventory, manage a warehouse, and now I'm managing a laptop online business. Now I was able to hire people to assist me, but when it came to learning how to build a website, that was very expensive. I could not afford that, so I had to do it myself. And after a few years, I was able to kind of find someone that's they were able to do some computer work for me, and I'd I think they would charge me like $30, $40 an hour, which back in 2015 was a lot of money. I, I still think $20, $30 is a fairly good amount of money, and $20, $30 an hour, especially when they're working for 10 hours and boom, they're done. Um, but anyways, that was, that was the work, and I had to learn about these laptops and computers and how to restart them and how to rebuild a website once it crashes and that was the biggest learning curve. You would think people, right? People, I, I learned that I'm not, I wasn't very good at people, so I hired people who were good at people, and that helped me. But I was not able to build an online business by outsourcing it. I had to go to school, and I was reading books, and then I realized that if a person wrote a book about online business, it was already two to three years beyond the curve. So I had to really be, I had to join these Facebook groups and these, you know, these, um, these kind of like, uh, groups of people online, I guess they're chat rooms where they would give advice about what they were doing. And so I started to becoming more of a online tea entrepreneur because I spent more and more time on how to do email marketing, how to do search engine optimization, how to get it so when people typed in boba, Zen's Tea House popped up at the top of the list. And I learned really quickly that the powers that be, big tech, they are really smart. And I, there's no outsmarting big tech. Even if you get away with it for a little while, you won't last for very long. And so, I took some classes at a, uh, a community college 
to learn how to make online sales. And mind you, my online sales were growing and growing and, and so were the farmer's markets and I started getting wholesale accounts. And then there was someone who, there was many people who asked, why don't you have a cafe? We want to see a Zen's Tea House brick and mortar location. That was a lot. I had already expanded my warehouse from being 1,200 square foot to 2,500 square foot. And I was doing, I believe, about 40 to 50 farmer's markets a week, running completely without me. I was spending a lot of time online learning how to expand and grow. But people wanted a cafe, and I knew that was expensive. It's still very expensive to build one. That is if you don't know what you're doing. And so... I got the cafe up and running. I spent, I'm not going to tell you how much. I bought a boba shop. I converted over to a Zen's tea house. Then after learning and growing, there was this thing called COVID during 2020. My business did really well online. The farmer's markets kind of stopped. Kind of like a lot of them went from about 60 farmer's markets down to 12. It was a huge hit. And we did not close our cafe doors because I'm prior military and I know that if the government wants to shut me down, then they're going to have to do so. And I'm not just going to voluntarily do it. Again, I'm prior military, deployed overseas. I, I understand how the bureaucracy works when it's the federal government or the state and even the county. Alley County is one of the biggest government agencies in the U.S., a lot of money that the board of supervisors have. And so I was learning how to manage all these things. I was, I was also learning just the bureaucracy and the challenges of once you make over a million dollars, how the government starts to knock on your door and say, we want your support, taxes. And at the end of 2020, this cafe in Uptown Whittier opened up. And I want you to understand that I did not come from money. I was not given any money, no loans from family or friends. And I'm, I'm kind of grateful I wasn't, not for my own, my own sake, but because I hate losing money. And if I lost other people's money, I think it would really uh, tear me apart, specifically if I'm risking and growing I just don't feel comfortable doing that. I don't like doing that. I'd rather, that's a whole other subject. So this is how we got to where we are today. Zen's Tea House has one cafe here. We have another cafe in Norwalk that has since become a franchise. It's owned and operated by a Navy veteran. And we're doing farmer's markets. And we're in the process of opening up more Zen's Tea House locations. Is it a franchise? I would say it's more of a micro franchise because in the years, the over a decade of, of learning and growing, what I found is that there is, there's, there's a skill set that's required, but more so the insight to be able to navigate. I am not the best people person. I'm not the most technologically advanced person. I like learning. I like people. Those two things will make or break you in business. The most successful people in business are great with people and they're not satisfied with what they know. It's a humble hunger to grow. So this is how the Zen Sea House Company was built. It started in 2012. Today is Labor Day 2024. We're closed because... I like offering my employees time off to spend time with their family because what I learned being overseas, being, being in the Navy is, you know, time is very valuable. And so if you want to learn some of the lessons that I learned, I share with it freely on YouTube. If you want to expand or grow your own business, maybe you want to have a Zen's Tea House Cafe and then convert it to your own business. Well, I want to let you know that that's what we're doing and we have been doing it for several years. Hope this was helpful. I hope you better understand how the Zen Sea House company has grown and that you don't have to be a genius. You don't have ha you don't have to have lots of money. You you really don't need much. You just need to have a love for people and a desire
to learn. If you found this video entertaining or helpful, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel and comments are welcomed as well.